Hello, Tex Andrews with the Light Zone Project, and in this video, the first of a series of videos on the Zone Mapper tool and the Zone Finder, I'm going to discuss basics of the Zone Mapper, and in subsequent videos associated with the Zone Mapper and Zone Finder, I'll talk about how they actually work when you're editing an image. The Zone Mapper tool is the tool that made light zone different and quite unique in 2005 and 2006 from all other editing programs. It is related to Ansel Adams and Fred Archer's zone system. In this particular manifestation you see a grayscale and it's divided into 16 sections. Each section corresponds to one half a stop in photographic terms. The zone mapper is divided into two parts. The smaller left hand part is fixed and doesn't change. The larger right hand part is where you can move the zones around to change the contrast of your image. You'll see that I have a cursor arrow here in the image. When I move it over the larger portion of the Zone Mapper tool, it turns into a double-headed white arrow. And then to the right of it here, you see there is a double-headed black arrow with a small line in between the arrows. That is a place where you can create a zone lock. So if I click on that, now you see this dark line that's been created between these two zones and out to the right of it is a yellow box with an X mark. And you can click that and eliminate that zone lock if you wish. By scrolling over this grayscale image you can see in the preview pane where the different zones are on this zone mapper tool in relation to where they are, what they are in this image. So if we look for our highest highlight, you see the yellow has opened up right there. The yellow indicates that our highest highlight is in this zone. So if I want to go ahead and skip up to the zone above it, I can set, I can pull this all the way up. You can see it lightens up the entire image. And it lightens up the lightest zone right there, which now you see is right in this topmost area. If I want to find my darkest area, I can scroll down to the bottom, and there it is over here in the corner, which corresponds to a bit of a tree right down here. This is probably an area I'll crop out of the image, but for now, we'll just say that that's where I would want to set my black point. So I can move to the zone just below that, drag that all the way down, and that creates my black point. And now you see that it has stretched the zones out on this scale. Note that this scale has not changed at all. That's your reference scale, and that'll always stay the same. You can put as many zone locks in this Zone Mapper tool as you want. We'll talk more about how many you ought to use in subsequent videos, but you have the option of putting one in every single one if you wish, and you can delete them at any time. When you place one zone lock, you can then grab it by left clicking, and you can pull it up like that, lightens the image, you can pull it down like this. Darkens the image. But there's a little bit more to it than that. I'm going to place two more right in the midtones. If I drag this one up and drag this one down, I have increased contrast in my image. If I squash them together, I have decreased contrast in those particular areas. Now, 
This has darkened the image up in the top end of the scale, but contrast in this middle area has actually been decreased. So when you want to lighten something, you drag it up. When you want to darken something, you click and drag it down. And when you want to increase contrast between zones, you pull them apart. And that's the basics of the Zone Mapper tool. Now, a last couple of things. You have an, the options of using Luminosity or RGB. I just had that set to RGB, but the default is Luminosity. And that's typically fine. RGB is something you should use if you are working in a color image particularly, and you suspect that some of your colors or one of your color channels is in some area of your image close to full saturation. If that's the case, you want to use RGB. And you may further want to go into the color selection tab, which is described in the basic tool anatomy videos, and select a certain portion of the color range so that you can better protect that from becoming blown out by using the Zone Mapper tool. Again, in subsequent videos, I'll talk more about how you actually use the tool in an image, but this gives you the basics of the tool use. Again, luminosity would be the default setting. And of course, in the Tool Selections tab, you can also decrease the tool opacity, or you can use a blend mode and the zone mapper will then work in accordance with the blend mode. And again, you can use regions. We'll show you how that's all done as well with the zone mapper tool and any of the other tools except for the red eye tool and the spot tool, really. So that's the introductory video for the zone mapper tool, which tells you how to use it, uh, basically. And in subsequent videos, we'll take a look at how it actually works in an editing session.